Based on a new report, it looks like Tesla's 4680 battery team has until the end of the year to get the cost of their nickel-based 4680 batteries below the cost of nickel batteries that they purchased from their suppliers, or Tesla may abandon the 4680 project altogether. Follow along as I discuss what this means, the likelihood of this actually happening, and what this means for Tesla's 4680 battery program. I'm John, and this is CleanerWatt. As I discussed in a previous video, Tesla is now producing 4680 batteries at a rate of around 7 gigawatt hours per year, which is enough to build 50,000 plus Cybertrucks per year. As compared to the previous quarter, according to Lars Moravi, this run rate represents an 18 to 20% increase, so Tesla is making progress, and in addition, Tesla is ramping the third of their four production lines at Gigafactory Texas as they work to complete phase one of the battery factory, and they do also have a phase two planned, which will include four more battery production lines. So while there has been some good 4680 battery news lately, the 4680 batteries that Tesla produces still cost more than the nickel-based batteries that they can purchase from their suppliers, but the goal is for that to change by the end of the year. Now, the good news is, as Lars Moravia reported in Tesla's Q1 2024 Investors Conference Call quote, because we're ramping, COGS continues to drop rapidly week over week, driven by yield improvements throughout the lines and production volume increases. Lars went on, so our goal, and we expect to do this, is to beat supplier cost of nickel-based cells by the end of the year. Later on in the investor conference call, Elon Musk echoed this and said, quote, As Lars said, we think it will exceed the competitiveness of suppliers by the end of this year, and then we'll continue to improve. So while this goal was mentioned in that Tesla conference call, based on a recent article published on Late Post. Dot com, it looks like this goal to reach a cost lower than suppliers is not just an aspiration, but it's actually more of an ultimatum. Reportedly, if the Tesla team cannot achieve this, the 4680 battery program could be abandoned altogether. Beyond that, Tesla's 4680 battery team has not been immune to layoffs, and around 50% of their battery materials team and around 20% of their 4680 battery team was recently let go, according to this article. In addition, Tesla's 4680 battery team does now have a new leader. In this article, it was reported, quote, We learned exclusively that Tesla appointed a new head of the 4680 battery department, Bone Eggleston. He then held a department-wide meeting and announced a suspension of layoffs, but must complete the cost reduction target by the end of the year. Now, Eggleston is not new to Tesla, and according to this article, quote, Eggleston, the new head of 4680 Battery Division, previously served as Senior Director of 4680 Battery, responsible for battery manufacturing engineering. Obviously, with the departure of Drew Baglino, Tesla needed a new leader for their battery program, and I'm excited to see what Bone Eggleston will be able to do for the team, and I will talk a little bit about Drew Bagolino later on in the video because he is mentioned in this article, this latepost.com article, but nonetheless, I am happy to see that Tesla does have a new leader over their battery program, and hopefully we'll see some good results in the near future. But with that being said, going back to that goal of getting battery costs lower than the cost of the nickel-based batteries from their suppliers, in this article it was written, quote, two people familiar with the matter said Tesla executives had proposed the goal of the 4680 unit at the beginning of this year to make self-produced batteries cheaper than suppliers. Battery division managers were told at the time that Tesla might abandon the 4680 project if the goal was not achieved by the end of the year. This is not something that I would have expected Tesla to put on the line, canceling the project altogether. And shortly, I will discuss the likelihood, in my opinion, of Tesla canceling their 4680 battery program. But before I dive into that, there were actually some more interesting details in this article that I want to discuss, including the fact that Tesla is reportedly still unable to mass produce their battery cathodes using their much more efficient dry process. On that topic, it was written in this article, quote, however, as of March this year, the annual production capacity of 4680 batteries is only enough to install 60,000 Cybertrucks and the cost is much higher than expected. 
Tesla is still unable to mass produce dry process cathodes. Now this is something that I suspected in the past because Tesla has not been very clear about whether or not they have been able to figure out how to mass produce their cathodes with their dry process. And obviously this is not coming directly from Tesla. This is being reported in an article here, but it does seem very likely that this is true. So can Tesla still achieve their cost goal if they're not actually producing these cathodes with a dry process? In all reality, it looks like this is one of the things holding back their ability to get to their cost goals. And it looks like Tesla may even set aside this goal of producing their cathodes with their dry process for now. Going back to this late post article on the topic of achieving the cost goals, it was written in this article, quote, several 4680 battery engineers feel this goal can be achieved. They believe that as long as Tesla no longer insists on producing its own dry process cathodes, is willing to purchase cathodes from outside and concentrates on improving production capacity, yield, and diluting cost, the 4680 battery project will likely be able to achieve cost reduction tasks before the end of the year. On this topic, it looks like Drew Baglino, before he left Tesla, really insisted on pushing through and developing their cathodes with a dry process and not really kind of skipping over this for now. In this article, it was written, quote, a Tesla engineer said that one disagreement in the previous 4680 development process was that Musk believed that a usable battery should be made first before continuing to iterate. But Baglino insisted on breaking through the dry process cathode rather than optimizing the transition plan. I don't know if this disagreement was one of the main reasons why Drew Baglino left the company or if it was related to something else, but nonetheless, it looks like Tesla's direction now is to optimize their 4680 batteries without a wet processed cathode and maybe work that wet processed cathode into the battery in the future. And in a lot of ways, this does make a lot of sense, at least for the short term, when Tesla needs to get that battery cost a lot lower. Now, with that being said, what is the likelihood of Tesla actually abandoning their 4680 battery program? Well, in my opinion, I think the likelihood is actually quite low given the massive investments that Tesla has made in their 4680 battery program. But Elon has shown that he's willing to make very drastic and sudden cuts when he thinks it's necessary, as he did with the supercharger team. However, I think this kind of pressure on the team will cause them to get to the goal that Tesla needs to, once again, getting that cost of these 4680 batteries to a cost that is lower than the nickel-based batteries they buy from their suppliers. Now, it's important to note that just because these batteries may not have dry process cathodes in them, it doesn't mean that the 4680 batteries will not be lower cost than the equivalents, the nickel-based equivalents of their suppliers, because Tesla still does benefit from the IRA manufacturing credits. They won't have to pay another company in the middle who has to make a profit. They also will be refining their own lithium and processing their own cathode materials. And in addition to that, there are other innovations with their battery manufacturing process, like their tablet design and the fact that they are producing dry process anodes right now, which should be quite a bit more efficient than the wet process for that particular side of the battery. In addition, I don't see this as Tesla giving up on producing cathodes with a dry process. It just means that they're going to have more time to develop this and introduce it later on in the future. So with that being said, I still have optimism for Tesla's 4680 battery program. And I do believe that with this kind of pressure being put on the Tesla team, that good things will happen. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.